So when you import an STL file to do a 3D carving in Vetric and you create a profile toolpath around the actual solid model, you'll end up with a really jagged finish that looks like this. In this video, I'm going to show you how to eliminate that and be sure you get a nice smooth finish all the way around your 3D carvings. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you want to continue to see more videos like this and be notified as soon as we post them, please hit the subscribe button below. I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to make the file 12 by 12 inches by 3 quarters of an inch thick with an XY datum of the center. I'm going to click OK. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import a component or 3D model and I'm going to select the STL file of this acorn tray here. Now what I need to do is rescale this because it's quite large right now. So I'm going to take the larger of the X, Y dimensions. In this case, Y is the larger number. I'm going to make that 12 inches and click apply. Next thing I'm going to do is unlock the X, Y, Z and I'm going to force the uh, height of the model down to three quarters of an inch so it fits on my material. I'm going to center the model so it fits within my model boundary and click OK. So there's my acorn model. Now, what I want to do here is I want to 3D carve this. So I'm probably going to run a roughing toolpath. I'm going to run a finishing toolpath. But I need to create a vector that goes all the way around the perimeter of the model so I can cut this out. All right. The way to do that is to select the model over here. And if you're in drawing tab mode, you're just going to select the model so it's highlighted. Go down here to modeling tab and then click on this, the third icon from the left called Create Vector Boundary Around Selected Component. I'm going to click on that. And what's going to happen is it's automatically going to generate a vector. You can see it right here that goes all the way around the edge of that component. Now, here's where the jagged process comes in play. Okay, If you, if you look at this and we click on Node Editing right here, You'll notice that you've got some nodes here. Some of these nodes are Bezier nodes because they have these uh, little uh, grab handles on them so you can manipulate the vector. All right, what's going to happen though is when you output this file, this, this perimeter uh, file here, it's going to convert all of those Beziers to straight line segments. And I'll show you. If we go here to, uh, let's see, create a toolpath, we'll create a profile toolpath on here. Um, we're going to go ahead and select that vector. I'm going to just cut it out with, uh, let's make it an eighth inch end mill. Um, and let's go down 0.75 and we're going to go outside the vectors. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate that. I'm going to preview it. And you can see there's my, my outside vector, I get the shape of the acorn. All right. I'm going to output this file to a G code a file with the, the name uh, acorn one, and that'll be my profile. Okay. I'm going to close that. Now, the next thing I want to do here is I want to go back in and I am going to select that vector one more time. All right, let me uncheck the toolpath. All right, and with that selected, I'm going to go over here to this icon, Curve Fit, Fit Curves to Selected Vectors, and I'm going to click that. And then instead of it being Bezier Curves, which it currently is, I'm going to make sure I select Circular Arcs. Now, there isn't a lot of crazy detail on this, so I'm going to use a tolerance of 10 thousandths. I'm going to keep sharp corners and replace selected vectors. I'm going to click Preview. Now, you'll notice that the number of uh, points has reduced a little bit. Now, what's going to happen now is instead of these points being Bezier curves, they're circular arc curves. So when you export the G-code file, you're now exporting in curves, which is going to be a smoother output. It's going to be less lines of G-code, and it's going to allow your CNC machine to run faster as you do this perimeter. Okay, so we're going to click OK. Now what we're going to do is we're going to repeat the profile. I'm just going to duplicate this. I'm going to do another profile. Same thing. I'm going to select the vector. Everything else is the same. I'm not changing anything here. I'm going to click Calculate. Now what I want to do is just output this second file. Okay, so we're going to save just the second file. And we'll call that one Acorn2. 
and we'll save that file. Now we're going to take a look at the two G code files and I want to show you what the difference is between the two of them. Okay, here's the first one, the Acorn one. Now remember, that's the one that used the uh, profile vector that was just generated that had the Bezier curves on it. Notice that the file size on that is 77K. Now Acorn 2 is the second one after I converted it to curves and you'll notice that that is only 16K, much, much smaller. Now let's take a look at the actual G-code file. Okay, so here's what you have on Acorn 1. One of the things you'll notice is that it's made up of G1, which is straight uh, as a G-code command for straight line segments. And you'll notice that you have an X and Y command for just about every line. So each one of these lines would represent one of those node points that, that you've seen. Now, the reason there's so many is because we did multiple tool paths. But in comparison, we did the same number of tool paths on both files. But the fact is, is that every one of these lines is a G1, which is a straight line segment between an X and a Y coordinate to the next X and Y coordinate. All right, so that's why you're getting a jerky motion as it's going around the perimeter of the actual object. And it's going to take a lot longer because it's basically you're, what you're doing is you're making a lot of short line motions on the machine as opposed to one smooth perimeter uh, you know, sweep around. Now let's take a look at the second file. If we look at that file, now here's where the difference is. So on this file, what you have now is you have G1 commands, which are uh, only where you're straight, if there is an actual straight line segment or you're doing, uh, like in this case, we're moving Z down and uh, we're setting the, the feed rate. But then everything else you're going to notice G2 and G3 commands. Now, instead of X and Y, you also have an I and J. And what that means, G, G2 and G3 are circular arc commands. So you're taking the starting coordinates, but you're also adding a uh, an arc command G code after it. All right, so the file is much, much smaller. This is the entire file with, remember, each of these files is the same amount of pass steps. So if we look at this one, this is six passes, and that was Acorn 1. If we look at the second one, also six passes, okay? So there's a, a huge difference in the number of file uh, lines that you have on, on the G code, all right? And that's due to the fact that by default, when you create a perimeter vector around an STL file, it creates it as a lot of line segments. Whereas if you convert it to circular arcs, you get a lot less G-code and it's going to be a much smoother motion around the object. And you're going to end up with a smoother finish. You're not going to have all of the jerky line segments. So that's today's tip. That's how to get uh, a better finish around a perimeter of an STL file when you import it into Vetric.